Right, good morning everybody. Uh, we'll start the series again with a bit of lazy summer. Wet one too, but there we go. And the last person up was Kenny McLeod. So we'll get a wee bit of rush on. We've got another four interviews teed up for you for the next month or so. Uh, which uh, my speed of editing you might see around about spring or something, but we'll see. Anyway, this is the uh, 4th of October and it's still 2012. And we're down at Sunny Annan. It's the only time this year that the sun has shone, but they knew that we were coming down here to do a wee bit of filming for Piper's Persuasion. And we've got a wonderful chap here, Walter Cowan. Walter is a wee man with a pen you see sitting at all the Highland Games, giving you a 4 out of 10 for your Dr. McLeod of Annick or whatever you happen to be playing at that particular time. So, we're going to have a wee bit of fun this morning, and I uh, hope you, as usual, sit back and enjoy. Walter, uh, Walter Cowan from Annan. Have you always been from Annan? Always been from Annan, Alan. Yeah, um, born and bred and doing Hamer. Is, is it oh, still no, 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 doing Hamer? Where's the doing Hamer's fit? Dumfries. Dumfries. Don't want to, I know that's a bit along the road there, oh, isn't right, it? Uh, definitely. Not a day with Annan. Nothing at all. Hey, did I have a riding in the marshes around it? Is we that way across the other side? Oh, this is riding the marshes country. Oh, arguably the best riding in the marshes. Well, there you are. And pipe bands as well. We have a pipe band competition, yep. and which we've had for goodness knows how long, since about the, since the 1950s. And you just recently experienced the British Championships three, three, at Annan. Three British Championships on the trot. Uh huh. Uh, sadly, we didn't get it continued because we, our offer was possibly not high enough, yeah. which was a wee bit of a misunderstanding by the guy on the, who was responsible in the, on the council for putting forward the, um, the bid. The bid. Yeah. He, okay. had, he had permission to go higher and he actually, from what I hear, from what I hear, he put in a bid less than the previous one. Dear, dear, dear. So, oh, well. sadly, it went to Bathgate. We'll just need to come back, uh, because folk get fed out of Bathgate pretty quick when they oh, saw right. this beautiful yeah. town of Annan. We Actually, want to come never get, clamour never get, to come never back get here. Get fed up of Annan, Alan. <laughs> 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 right, where did you start your piping, and, and, and when did you start your piping, and what's uh, the circumstances you taught? Well, father came out of the army in 1940. In the 1945, uh -huh. he was a piper in the KSB, Aye. and his pipe major was John Slattery. Okay. Now John Slattery's son eventually became a pipe major in the Scottish Gardener, about the same time as Angus MacDonald and, and that crowd, you know, uh -huh. Gavin Stoddart, etc. Yes. Uh, and I started, he started me off in 1946. Uh-huh. Uh, he started me off and I progressed to the pipes. Okay. And then he sent me to Willie Bryson in Edinburgh. Aye. What well, age were you around about all this kind of carrier? Well, I was born in 1936, so 1946 I'd be 10. Aye, okay. Nice age to start. Aye, and I, when I was about 12, uh -huh. he used to pack, pack me off in the bus on a Saturday morning. Aye. And into Dumfries, change buses at Dumfries, get the bus from Dumfries to Edinburgh. Unaccompanied. Up through, up, unaccompanied through the Dalveen Pass. It took about three hours in these days. Dear, dear. Got picked up in Edinburgh at one o'clock. Uh -huh. Got uh, about two or three hours tuition of Willie Bryson down at Sinclair's in Leith. He's a good guy. Great guy. Mm -hmm. Great guy. He, um, he was a pupil of Bobby Reid. Uh -huh. in, in fact, uh, I stand to be corrected, but I think Bob Hardy was possibly uh, one of the last pupils of Bobby Reid. Okay. And maybe Willie Connell comes into that category. But Willie yes. was, a, was a, a pupil of Bobby Reid and he was a pipe maker. And I had two hours tuition on a Saturday afternoon. Got the bus at five o'clock. It's in Andrew Square. Back to Dumfries. Changed Aye. buses back to Annan. And I did that once a month for about two years. Did you record that? You wouldn't be able to record no, then and no. just that all in your brain. I did, I did a recording, funnily enough. There was a, a BBC programme called Children's Hour. Uh -huh. Aye. And the lady that ran that was a lady called Kathleen Garskadden. Uh -huh. And uh, she did a programme called Young Scotland. Uh -huh. 
and I was chosen to represent the piping fraternity. Good. And I played, I can remember the tunes I played, I played um, the, the Athol Highlanders March to Loch Catherine, uh, Athol Comers, uh -huh. and Willie Murray's Rule. You didn't pick any of the tunes, did you? No. <laughs> I, don't know, I, don't know I don't know whether I played them very well or not, but I can remember. What kind of pipes are you playing? Well, the pipes I've got, I got my, I had an uncle, uh -huh. George Grant, the ex, ex pipe major in the Scotch Guards, mm -hmm. former pipe sergeant of the Edinburgh Police under Donald Ramsey. Okay. Uh, and he emigrated to Canada. Uh -huh. And he uh, died, as every piper should die, on the boards playing in a solo pipe competition. Fantastic. Took a heart attack and... and uh, so when they got a prize that day? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't collect it, that's for sure. <laughs> and um, I inherited these pipes. Now these pipes were a set of Henderson's uh -huh. uh, ivory presented by the city of Glasgow to the Cameroonians. Yeah, that's interesting. Eh? Now the regiment put Silver Mounts on them uh -huh. in 1906. Yeah, yeah, Silver yeah. is, uh, you know, stamped 1906. Yeah. Uh -huh. And the guy that was the Colonel of the regiment, Colonel Miller, uh -huh. came from Annan. And by some way, rightly or wrongly, he got the pipes. Uh -huh. And uh, they were bought by my Uncle George Grant's father. Okay. And I, when George died, of course, I... You I fell heir to them. Fell heir to them. Aye. A good set of drones, eh? Great set of drones. Nearly as good as yours, Alan. Aye, there you go. Uh, Aye. Uh -huh. Aye. And it, it must have been good then, eh? Uh, it must have been. <laughs> and, of course, uh, for the young guy who's just uh, coming up and piping, the teenagers and all this, viewing this, uh, and I keep on hammering this point, and why not, it was cane drone reeds cane and, the, and the sheepskin bag and sheepskin all this. Bags. And uh, no fancy water traps or no, anything like no, that. No, no central heating systems in your bag. Nothing. No. And that was it. I think the only thing I had was a wee, it was old Willie Sinclair, took my blue stick uh, out and uh, he took the stock out, he plugged it, drilled the hole and put a wee bit of pipe. Aye. Just protruding beyond the the, the, the cork. Uh -huh. And the water collected in there and you just took your blue stick out. Aye. Fantastic. So that, that, was, that, was, that, yeah. was, that was it. That was the end thing. Aye, it was just like a wee well, if you That's like. That's right, exactly. Aye. Aye. Uh, and then they progressed to the tube. The, the, the moose folk, they've got something similar, a moose aye. trap and a uh -huh. combined valve. Uh, oh, aye. There's... Not that I'm advertising. I, and I'm not because I use a different system myself now, mm -hmm. but I, I, I did use that and it was quite efficient, uh -huh. you know. Uh, and the chanter at that time. Well, I played a, a Macpherson chanter. Uh -huh. Now, when the Edinburgh Police won the World Championship in Dumfries mm -hmm. uh, in 19, I think it was in the 1960s somewhere, Willie Bryson and Willie Sinclair made 24 uh, Macpherson chanters for the Edinburgh Police Pipe Band. Okay. And they won the, the World Championship with Dumfries playing these. Now my father got four of these chanters from Willie Bryson. Mm -hmm. And I played a Macpherson chanter for most of my solo piping career, along with reads made by a guy called Jock Kerr who played in the Edinburgh Police Pipe Band. Uh -huh. And uh, the drone reads were keen, of course. Uh -huh. Uh, I also played reads made by D. R. McLennan from the roads in North America. I heard of these uh, a long time ago. Uh -huh. hey, and what sort of pitch were you playing in the, the, the chanter at that time? Well, quite a low pitch? It was quite low pitched. Is it lower than the Hardy? Which came in about the, the, the mid-century, mid you know? Much the same. Uh, so it would be quite a longer uh, a uh, pipe chanter reed and what's used now. Uh, the, 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 the blades were just... Yeah, that's what I'm saying, oh, just slightly longer, 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 narrower. Right? And, and you had a bit more wood to work with. Yeah, right. Uh, strong? Quite strong. Quite yeah. strong. And then, then the McAllister reed came, of course, and it was, it was a cracking reed. D did that fit your McPherson all right? 
by that time I had changed to a Sinclair channel. Okay. And uh, the uh, the McAllister reads. Yeah, I fitted that. Fitted that because I, I yeah. believe that John John K. McAllister worked yeah. in Sinclair's shop off and on at times. So whether he got any experience there, I don't he know. He was quite a clever read maker anyway. Oh, I know. The, the three brothers. The, Aye, you yeah. know, the, 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 and we've got the, one of the brothers on Piper's Persuasion trying to explain that. Oh, uh, that, that, the, that the read be, making that aspect. That would be Willie. Yeah. Willie McCulley, an ex Scots Guardsman, yeah. played in the band that my other uncle, same name as myself, was pipe major of during the war. What one was that? Walter Cowan. Aye, but uh, what Walter band? Willie, Scots Guards. Uh, Scots Guards. Scots Guards. Right. Uh, Willie McAllister was one of the pipers in that band. Just before we leave Bryson, I understand he was a good composer. Great composer, yeah. Aye, uh, you remember any of the tunes? Oh, El Eleanor, one of the finest six eights you'll hear. Mm -hmm. Uh, the Skyman of Arnhem. Mm -hmm. Jeannie Mochlin. Jeannie Mochlin. Uh -huh. aye. Aye. And there's a jiggy composed called Agitated Fingers. Uh -huh. uh, I, I can play three parts of that. I'm sure there was five parts of that, which is quite unusual for a tune. And I had a copy of that. And I'm sure I gave it to my brother, and I'm sure he's lost it. <laughs> and uh, it's a tune I've never heard anybody else play. Uh, my goodness, sir. Uh... But an uh, absolute brilliant player. Aye, aye. Absolute brilliant player. So all these folk would be bringing you on. Uh, did you play in the solos when you were a youngster? The, the, I did, the, the, yes. The uh, how, uh, how did you go on there? Well, the Ayrshire and Dumfries and Galloway branch of the Pipe Band Association held the, the champ championship every, every year. Uh -huh. And um, there was fair, some fair good players that played there. Ian Clough. Okay. A, um, Tom Spears. Yes. Uh, there was another guy, uh, John Martin, who shifted down to uh, South of England sometime. He was quite a good player, the guy. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't say he was the same category as Ian uh -huh. or Tom, but he was quite a fair player. Um, other players in the, the, that come to know it there was a guy called Gordon Callaghan. Uh -huh. He was near by, he came from about Irvine. Aye. And of course, uh, Archie McCroskey. Aye. From me, me, Bob McCroskey's brother, I think it was. Ar Aye. He was supposedly, at his time, the best player in Ayrshire, which was before my time. Aye. And I'd, I think I won that competition about nine or ten times. But one of the times I won it, I won a gold medal, uh -huh. which was presented to Ear Pipe Band. Uh, for a competition they won, and the guy that was a pipe major was Jimmy Dungable, mm -hmm. and he presented it to the branch, and I was fortunate enough to, to, to win that medal. And his, in fact, his son, Sandy Dungable, was a was a, an excellent drummer with the Ear Pipe Band and the Johnny Walker Band. Uh, I believe he's retired, lives in Girvan now. It's when you were competing, it would be. MSR's March of Spades and Reels. Uh, did you have a favourite set of tunes at that particular time before you moved on to adults? Uh, at that time, I would think with the... Uh, I won the medal at Cole, I won the bronze medal at Cole in 1951, I think it was, okay. playing Pipe Major John Stewart. Uh -huh. Nice march, that. And again, yeah. I played um, Ethel Commerce. Uh -huh. and uh, Willie Murray's rule, but I had a different sort of uh, arrangement of Willie, Willie Murray's rule. They called it the warming of the fingers, and um, I've of, often played it, and people have said, that's Willie Murray's rule. I says, well, I believe so, but I, I got it as uh, the warming of the fingers. I've seen two settings of that, depending on what book you're reading uh -huh. out of. It's one of my tunes, actually, and I uh -huh. quite like that tune. I uh -huh. like the older uh, version. Uh, that would be the old Dardelshire set. Aye, I think Donald McLeod had it in the, one of his books as well, but uh -huh. um, uh -huh. not the setting that I favoured myself, uh -huh. you know. Uh -huh. uh, but it's a, it's a lovely tune because it, it, 
flows very smoothly, you know, through all the phrases and there's nothing staccato about it. And it's, That's right. That's it's right. a lovely flow to that Aye. tune. I certainly recommend it to anybody. Aye. Willie McCallum had quite a bit of success with that That's tune. Right. You'll find that any solo piper from Argyle Aye. has got that in his repertoire. That's amazing, isn't it? Yeah. In fact, when I played with Ronnie McCallum in the eight Argyles, that was one well, of the... That's a lovely cue, because that was my next question. <laughs> 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 yeah, I... uh, in 1959, mm -hmm. uh, they were building Chapel Cross Power Station in yeah. Annan. Yeah. And there was a guy who came to the band, he was a drummer in the Ether Giles, Mick Patterson was his name, and he tutored our drum corps. Uh -huh. And he and I became very friendly. So we were, my wife and I were asked to go up to Dunoon where he lived for a weekend. Okay. So we went up to Dunoon for the weekend, and Mick and I went down to the the TA Hall on the Saturday afternoon and the ladies went downtown the noon shopping, you know. Uh -huh, uh -huh. <laughs> and uh, I think Mick and I over imbibed and I signed on for four years in the TA. That well, was a kind of expensive drink that, eh? It was indeed. <laughs> but, uh, however, and it, it, it had its rewards because the pipe major of the Eighth or Girls was Ronnie McCallum. Uh -huh who uh, I've been very close to and um, in fact I'm, I'm still very very close to, to his family uh -huh. uh, in the shape of uh, Stuart Little yes. and his, his, his late uncle Archie McCallum. Who Could you explain the, the connection between Stuart and, uh, and Ronnie? Stuart is Ronnie McCallum's grandson. Okay, right, good. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And I had the privilege of taking Stuart on to play at his first solo competition at Cowell. Uh -huh. Because his grandfather was judging one of the other competitions and I, and I was told in no uncertain terms that I was to take this young grandson in and tune his pipes and put him on the boards. There you are. What age would Stuart be at that time? Oh, he was about 10, I would think. He's fairly come on since, hasn't he? Ah, he's not a big deal, <laughs> <laughs> he's, 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 he's nothing short of a miracle. <laughs> because, as, as we well know, five Aye. years ago he had a novice juvenile band in Inverary. And now they're challenging for the Grade 1. Aye, well, well, they were third in the Grade 1 in uh, 2011. And, uh, uh, amazing. Uh, and they figured uh, highly this year in the championships, it, uh, and they have not reached their full potential and never oh, is no, no, young band. shaking in their shoes because they don't know what's going to be at their back in the next Aye. five minutes, Aye. and Stuart's the, the man there. Um, while you're in the army, uh, um, the, the, the T.A., the T I've right. never seen an angry man. T.A., okay, Hugh. Uh, get inveigled, uh, you inveigled in Peabrook. Now, you oh, better explain yeah. to folk. That was a bit of a joke. Aye, uh, but you, you, you don't play Peabrook really no, uh, not seriously. Not seriously, and I don't judge Peabrook because I haven't got the necessary knowledge. Okay. But uh, at a TA camp in 1960 or 61, down in Millen in South Cumberland, uh, they had what they called the Brigade Cup. Uh -huh. That was the the TA regiments, yeah. Seventh or Giles, Eighth or Giles, and whatever, and they, they had the Peabrook competition, and Aye. I was told you'd play in it. We run it, says you would be playing it. Aye. Everybody that, that in the band that, that had a wee bit knowledge of it had to play in it. So we played, and I played. I got a kiss of the king's hand. Good driving tune, that. And I, yeah. I, I was doing okay, and then I got to think the, the, the start of the the, the, the crew and I, something happened and I just stopped and that was it so I thought no oh, I'll, I'll have to suffer the wrath of the pipe major because he was one of the judges along <laughs> with pipe major Smith of the Seventh of Giles uh -huh. and Brigadier Freddie Graham uh -huh. the guy with the two-toned moustache okay and um, so the results came out Hugh McCallum of course won it Aye. brilliant player brilliant uh -huh. player and I got second you get second? I got second. How did that work? Well, it was because there, I think there was eight people played. Aye. And seven of us broke down. <laughs> but uh, I got furthest <laughs> through the tune, further than the other six. Ah. So I got uh, uh, 
second prize. Uh, That's like an unusual competition, that one, eh? I've got a wee trophy somewhere. Have you? Which I quite cherish. Second in the Peebra. Aye. To Hugh McCallum. To Hugh McCallum. Sounds good on your CV. Aye, aye. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> well, good days so, in the tea, and I got a few uh, lessons off, off Ronnie. He was, he was a very patient guy. It was that when you moved into serious March of Spain Rio aye, playing? Aye, yes. And uh, you won the March and Spain Rio at their Gershaw Gathering, uh, the, the two separate competitions, March competition, Spain Rio competition. You won the two on the same day, I understand. That's right, that's right. Aye. Can you that tell was, us about that? That was in 1982. Okay. Um, it was outside in these days. And I went to play in the Sir Spain Rail this morning in the morning and it was a there was a short lead. Mm -hmm. And I managed to get into the the final. Uh -huh. The judges that day were John D. Um Seamus Burgess and James McNeil. And Dr. Leslie Craig. Okay. So I got into the final. Uh, Sorry to interrupt you, uh, but that's the kind of thing I do, you know. Uh, See, when you played in the short lead, did you have to play different tunes from what you actually played in the final? Yes. And if so, yep. could you t do you recall what the tunes were? I think in the morning I played the uh, Struan Robertson. Uh, Struan Robertson, Anderson Castle, and The Sheep Wife. Okay. And in the afternoon I played the Caledonia Society. <laughs> And Major Manson. Okay. And uh, I won that. Uh -huh. And they announced that just after lunchtime. Okay. Like maybe half past two in the afternoon. So I thought, that's it. Great. Don't care what happens now. Aye. Because I was last on in the marches. I think there was 50 odd competitors. Right, like goodness. Big, big, big six, field. 60, a big, big, big field. No aye. short lead. Aye, aye. So it was getting late on. It was maybe about five o'clock ish. And it was due to come on a brilliant sunny day. Getting tuned up, uh -huh. and uh, it was it was Andrew Pitt Keithley, Doctor Bob Freighter, and Doctor Caird, uh -huh. and um, just as I was just about going to start, and his helicopter comes across. Oh, for goodness' sake! To land with some dignitary, uh -huh. and I said, "No, what are we going to do here? Because there wouldn't be people here the, the bagpipe." Uh -huh. So Andrew Pitt Keithley, gentleman as he was. Uh -huh. I uh, got out of his seat, then came to me and says, look, just nip off for two or three minutes and keep your bagpipe going to this thing gets away. Aye. Which I did. Uh, and then I went on. Mm -hmm. Pipes were going great. And played possibly the best march I ever played in my life. What was that? The Duchess of Edinburgh. And um, uh -huh. I won the thing because Murray Henderson was winning the thing out of the park. Aye. And uh, <laughs> Murray, Murray had been a remark uh, after... Jokingly, because he's a great guy, uh, he says, well, he, he more or less doubted my parentage. <laughs> but, uh, that, was, that was their girls from gathering. Yeah, that was fantastic. And then the following year I played in the uh, Farmer Winners uh -huh. outside. And it was a, a big stage. Yeah. And for some reason, I put six partners in. You know, you put six of each. Aye. And I got three six partners to play. Oh, yeah. Alexander Kennedy, uh -huh. Ethel Cummers and the Shoot Wife, twice through, which they still do. Aye. And for some reason I decided, I'd seen Big Ronnie Laurie walk it when he walked on the boards, he walked around the boat, see. Yeah. He says, I'm going to try this. Aye. Why I did that, I don't know. Aye. And I, I done that, and I could feel myself getting dizzy, so a halter went back and forward. Aye. <laughs> going fine. Uh, and the last part of the sheep wife, second time through, uh -huh. big drone stopped. Ah, oh, dear, it. dear, dear. And I thought, well, why did that not happen first time through the first part of the match? I, I, I me with that bother. Did you not know see that happening to Angus McCall a couple of years ago? They, 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 the they, the they, same they, competition. Aye. And it was the last part of uh, Pretty Marion. Mm -hmm. Again, the humongous uh, so set of tunes. 100 parts of that tune. Aye, and uh, he got, it was the second time round. Aye. And he got to the last part and again broke down. Aye, I wonder if he said damn after that. Aye, and there was a, just a collective sigh Aye. around the hall because he'd won out of the park. Oh, a brilliant player. And, you know, it was just, we're waiting and just waiting up the next two bars and that was him walking off to a, a, a big uh, mm -hmm. round of applause. Mm -hmm. 
and I, everybody didn't know where to look because it's it's a car crash. Oh, it's a soul destroying feeling too. Aye, aye, aye. Yeah. It, it, terrible. So you did these experiences. Did you play at Inverness? I did. Yes, I. I was in the prize list like three times. We were. I was second in the, the second or third in the hornpipe jig one year, and I was third in the stress spray and reel. Uh huh. Twice, I think. Okay. Mm -hmm. Great. See these competitions. I, I try to explain to people that have not knowledge about this, you know, and. What's, what's the big kick about the Argyllshire gathering, the, the Northern meeting at Inverness? How is it different from the rest of the, the games that you get around? Well, uh, everybody's there. Anybody of note always wants to play the Argyllshire uh -huh. gathering or um, Inverness. Mm -hmm. um, you know, people talk about Braemar, but Braemar is because the Queen goes. Aye. Uh, not that I'm trying to belittle the competition in it by any means, but uh, not in the same... What about Bratter Gorm at London, for instance? Good competition. Aye. Though the well, very small criticism, there's an awful lot of competitions. They cater for everybody Aye. that day, you know. Aye. Which it's... is good for piping, good for, good for people that only get maybe a chance once a year to compete. But it scatters the audience, doesn't it? It does. It does. Aye. The senior events are good. Uh -huh. uh, and but the cater for the amateurs, which again, as I say, is is good, is good because the, the gives, gives the guys a, a chance. Uh, um, have you have you been down at the London? You played at London. Yes. Hi. Any success? I, I remember the first time I played. <laughs> it was in the old Glaciers Hall. Uh -huh. And um, I think I tied uh, for third place in the. Stacking Cup, Stacking Cup, with would you believe Jimmy Warwick, Jimmy, mm -hmm. Jimmy Warwick, and we shared the prize money. I think we got about three quid each. For goodness' <laughs> sake, three pound. Three yeah. pound. But, uh, uh, so I, I've judged down at Linden for quite a number of years, and, and you're very well looked after, as you, as you are in most competitions. Are you going down this year? Yes, sir. Uh, ah, well, I'll see you there. Oh, that's good. Oh, There's that's a good. gang of us going down, right. and it'll be my first time at the Baratta Gorm, so I'm looking forward oh, to it. Oh, you'll enjoy it. The, down the, the facilities are great. I might as a small sherry in the road down, you know. Oh, the purely train. medicinal. Aye. Purely medicinal. Hey, so, judging, how many years have been judging now, Walter? Oh, I would say since about 1985, somewhere about there. Uh huh. Uh -huh. I judge pipe bands for a wee while, but mostly indoor mini bands to play that. And, and we had a wee uh, word about that off camera, so uh, let's just kill that subject stone uh, dead. Uh, uh, what, what's I, your views on pipe band judging and you being involved? Well, I feel, and again it's my opinion, it may be the opinion of others, that there should be some sort of consultation with uh -huh. the judges. I mean, they're not even allowed to speak to each other during the competition. Uh -huh. And with the size of pipe bands nowadays, you're, you're talking in excess of... 20 pipers and 10 side doors. Aye. You could be at the other side of the band and, and something happens at the one side that your colleague can hear. Uh -huh. And uh, So, know, so this that, would maybe uh, explain the disparity between placings, say, uh, between two piping judges. I'm that, sure it, uh, fortunately it doesn't happen very often. Aye. Doesn't happen very often, and it doesn't happen doesn't happen too often in the the, the, the major competitions. Yeah, but uh, I feel that they should be able to to consult with each other. Yeah. Okay. Uh, one, one opinion was that oh, you could get a very dominating character within the group of judges, and he would dominate the proceedings. But uh, that shouldn't be allowed to happen. Aye. But uh, that's again, as I say, that's only my opinion. So, okay, leaving that aside, uh, the solo uh, piping, you obviously uh, thoroughly enjoy sitting on the bench there. Oh, yes. And you, you you do converse with your fellow judges. That's it, that's it. yes, right. Uh, and so uh, you, you, got, you you do all the major competitions. You've been at Glenfiddich a few I've times? I've been at Glenfiddich three times, I think. Aye. What's the difference between judging at Glen Fiddich, which is uh, sometimes uh, probably wrongly termed as a champion of champions because it's the end of the season, 
Uh, what's the difference between there and the atmosphere at uh, Gersa gathering the Northern Meeting? Again, it's one competition on one day. Yeah. So the audience is you know, focused uh, on the one competition. The Gersa yeah. gathering, you've got the, 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 and Inverness, you've got the, the choice of maybe three competitions going on at the same time. A lot of different events. Uh -huh. yeah. And the, the Glenfiddich, the, the, the audience participation, you know, it's, it's the audience sitting in there. And what, for the players, it must be, the tension must be tremendous. And of course, you've got a, a very small catchment of players. That's right. I think it's it was, it was 12, 10. 14, something like that. 10, I think, I think 14. it's 10, I think. Right. Right. Uh, so they're pretty selective there, mm -hmm. depending on the track record of these players that season with the other major competitions where well, they get to play at Glenfiddich. Whereas you've got a bigger field at the Gersler Gathering and the Northern Meeting, haven't you? Uh -huh. uh -huh. Although it's limited, but it's, it's a big field. Aye. It's a big field. Um, the Gersler Gathering, you know, as I say, there's about 10 play, but. Um, they have the people from the morning and the, the march to Spain in the afternoon. Yeah. And uh, this year, for instance, it's good to see a, a couple of the younger guys cut their nose in in calm moment. Aye. And um, there's a new and McCrimmon. Uh -huh. uh, it'll be a terrifying experience for young Callum, but I'm sure he'll handle it well. I mean, what about the standard of uh, piping in general, solo piping in general? Has it uh, risen over the years since uh, your day? Uh, for, for the, uh, uh, is there something missing now that was present at that time? Could you discuss that for I a think second or two? The, um, the standard is higher, I think, I've got to be honest. Uh -huh. It galls me to say that, but uh, I, think, I think there's so many young, good players going about. Um, and what way is it the a higher standard? I mean, you could discuss know, instruments, you discuss the finger dexterity, discuss the music. And, and, and there's people are always prepared to travel for Aye. tuition now. Yes. I mean, you, you get the, the, the guys coming from across the pond and um, they're becoming more sort of, how can I, when, when they came across first, and I, and I might be a wee bit controversial here, but they didn't smile very much. Uh -huh. They were so dedicated to what they're doing because they spent a lot of money getting there. Of course. But now they come across and they're, you know, there's smiles in their faces and uh, they were all, all good guys. Uh -huh. they, in the early days. They get Bill Livingston and uh, uh, others coming across. Bill and, uh, you know, you know, once you get to know these guys, they're fine. Uh -huh. but, but some of them, some of them, you know, did they smile too much? Aye. Because they were concentrating so much and having spent so much money getting it's across here. Serious business, uh, really, uh, and, for and them. Some, some of the guys that were over here, you know, they, they, they could relax a wee bit more because they had a, they had the, the, to fork out for airfares and stuff like that. And if they broke down this Saturday, get another game next That's Saturday. Right. Aye. 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 And if you came across from Toronto or Vancouver and you broke down the first part of the march. That's good night. That's it. Aye. See, you see, you <laughs> see you next year. See you next year. Aye, you know, a, a, another set of games in aye, a few days' aye, time. I can, could aye. Fully, I can fully understand. So, I was harking back about the standard a minute ago. What about the, the way Barts and Space Mules are played? Uh, are they played musically? Is, is, a, is the music there today in comparison to your day? Most of the time, yes, I, I. Okay. One thing I would say that the, the, the pitch of the bagpipe is sky high now. Uh huh. I can't go much higher. Right. Either that or we're going to lose the top hand. Aye. Um, the, the drone sound, you know, there's so many different types of drone read going about. Uh, very well made. Yeah. Sounding in the main very good. Uh huh. But uh, some of the older guys, more experienced guys, I think uh, the keen reads, you, you, you're getting that wee bit more sort of resonance from it. Aye, you're getting the aye. harmonics coming aye. out of the instrument. Aye. 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 I always played keen reads. Uh -huh. um, and I, I was, I wasn't too bad of wet, with regard to wet blowing, I wasn't too bad. Yeah. But if you're a wet blower, it, it could be a nightmare. Well, Someday, and I'm not going to mention his name, had a bad experience at the Springbank just a week or so ago. 
mm -hmm. uh, with that self same problem, right. where they get to almost at the end of their uh, well, sorry, no, they're halfway through the marks of being real and just pipes went right off the, mm -hmm. uh, the reel altogether and uh, the drones went absolutely mm -hmm. able, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, some of because they're soaking wet. Right. Whereas the other folk who will we, uh, play with the central heating in the bag, as you say, and uh, the plastic reeds and everything else, and they don't seem to suffer the same way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, but again, it's personal taste, isn't That's it? Right. That's right. And how you're blowing and how your instrument will be able to handle the synthetic reed. That's right, yeah. And they've got all these accoutrements in the bag, you know. Uh, they, put, they, put, they put these granules in, in the... The, the, the cat litter. Aye. Aye. Mate, it's quite a difference for syrup, isn't it? <laughs> My father used to have some terrible concoctions. He used to, what the white of an egg, uh -huh. with some sugar in I think it was, he used uh -huh. to whip it up, it was like a meringue at the finish, uh -huh. and after two or three weeks the bag absolutely stunk. So what did you do with that then? You just persevered until the bag rotted and you could find it. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. John, John McAllister showed me that, or told me that, to, when you got a new bag, get some decorator's size, mm -hmm. just a spot of hot water to dis dissolve the granules, uh -huh. stick that in, and, and swirl it about inside the bag into the seams and that, drain it off, hang it, out, hang it on the washing line, uh -huh. and then blow the bag up, plug it, uh -huh. and if there was any sight, if, if the, 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 ba the bag wasn't fully inflated in the morning, uh -huh. there was, it was had it done its job properly. But they'll tell you that they, it worked. Aye. It worked. And then you seasoned the bag after that. Oh, you put seasoning in after that? After that. Aye, mm -hmm. there you go. Eh? So, so I, 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 I used to get my bags off a guy, he was, he was the bass drummer in the Edinburgh Police Band, Tom Ritchie. And there were, uh -huh. This was pre that sheep disease we inherited from the Russians. Aye. And um, great grand skins, you know. And this area here was, was one of the worst hit with that, that, that uh, disease that the, the, the sheep got. Aye. And um, at that time, pipe bags, you could hardly get them. I, the, the, I spoke to a, a bag maker uh, last year or two, and they said it's actually good to watch the country where the bags come from, uh, the, the, the sheep skins come from, uh -huh, because. Uh -huh. If there's barbed wire in use in that sort of area where they're getting the, the, the sheepskin from, there's a fair chance it'll be punctured by the barbed wire. <laughs> and then there's a serious observation. Right, right aye. He'd actually uh, to uh, make inquiries about that because, in other words, he would be buying uh, all mate, sorts uh, of skins uh, with a hole in it, uh, made uh, by the, the, the sheep brushing up against the barbed wire. When it was alive. Aye. It's amazing that, isn't it? <laughs> um, right, what about, we've spoken about Callum Bowman and we've spoken about an uh, excellent player and lots of the modern guys, uh, Stuart Liddell and these folk. How does the uh, likes of Don McPherson and Don McLeod compare? Oh, they're two brilliant players. Brilliant players. That was two of my favourite players along with Duncan Johnson. Uh -huh. Uh, what's been said about Donald McLeod and Donald McPherson doesn't need me to, 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 to talk about that because everybody knows they were a, a, tremendous players, great records. But Duncan Johnson was a wee bit different. Duncan mm -hmm. didn't compete very much with oh, you know, cracking set of fingers. Aye. Brilliant, brilliant. Wonderful. And, a, and a, a really good tutor as well. Aye. Really good tutor. I taught a lot of famous. Oh, uh, people uh, mm -hmm. uh, taught uh, Roddy McLeod as well, didn't they? So I believe, yes. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, but lots of other uh, famous pipers. Uh -huh. um, a really nice guy too. Mm -hmm. um, bags of music. Oh. And he was right across the board. Peeber, Marsh, Spain, Real, uh -huh. Hornpipe, Jig. A fantastic composer. Uh -huh. I remember listening to, uh, I think it was a Seamus McNeil programme, and Alec Dithart and Duncan were interviewed and then they played together. Aye. 
Uh, no, it was absolutely <laughs> tremendous. Hot <laughs> pipes and jigs, goodness me. Oh, is it Great a, stuff. By a white to oh, uh, uh, Duncan, uh, wasn't oh, it? I could, uh, as I say, if he had competed, some of these guys would have got afraid. Aye. Some of these guys would have got afraid. But yeah, good bagpipe as well, didn't they? Oh, aye. aye. I don't uh -huh. know who's got his bagpipe now. No, I don't know. But, uh, any other sort of observations come to mind about your, your piping uh, life at well, all? Well, I took the, my, my solo piping career, as it was, uh, took a wee bit of a backward step when I took over the band. Um, but uh, I had two goes really at the solo piping, up until I was about 30. I had a wee measure of success then, and then I took the band over, became pipe major of the band. And Three for a time right, over a day. Well, this is, this is going back to the collective judging system. Yeah. Uh, okay, the, the pressure's still there, the tension's still there, but you, you know that you've got a guy either side of you or, or, or whatever that you, you can talk to, and that eases the, the tension and the, the pressure. Uh -huh. Whereas, Okay, when you're sitting yourself, Aye. that's different. But the, the major competitions, you know that you're not yourself. But when you're out there in, in, the, in the, the World Championship judging grade one, you're on your own. Although right. the, your, your colleagues are there doing the same job. Yeah. But you, you, you haven't got the, 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 the sort of thing that whereby you can talk to these guys. And, Aye. And that would certainly ease the... And you take copious notes when you're judging the solo pipe. Oh yes, right. right. But you try and do it discreetly, because um, you know if the, if the, the guy's trying his hardest and she's you're writing, he's thinking, no, oh, I've done something wrong. He's not. Ah, he's Mr. G. Grace. Right. You dive right on right. your pen right away. He doesn't, away. He doesn't, doesn't realise that. He, he doesn't realise that he might be saying, oh, well, that, 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 that. Aye, that's so not he, well phrased or whatever. You, yeah. you try and do it. Well, I try and do it when. And the guy's marching up and down when he's turning aye. and do a quick note so that you kind of see that you're really aye. Aye. aye because I used to watch you know you're playing you're watching the ground and you start oh but I know that the, the, there is a bit of pressure there but um, yeah it's all part of the thing isn't it and you still enjoy listening to your piping and enjoy oh, the crack I, I still have a wee bit tune on my, my red pipe Aye. I got a red pipe uh, what, two years ago. Aye. My wife bought me it for my, my Christmas, I think it was. Yeah. And the great thing about that red pipe is yeah. it's fully electronic. You don't need to blow. Made in Germany as well. Eh? Made in Germany. But you see, I've, I've got a problem with my hands. I've got Jupiter's contracture in both hands. I've had oh, five or six operations on them. So Stuart McCallum of uh, McCallum, McCallum Bike Pipes. Pipes yeah. He made, makes the chanter for these red pipes, so he measured up all my hands, you know, all twisted fingers and marked the holes, drilled the holes to shoot my fingers. Marvelous. Sent it away to Germany. Aye. And I can play with tune. That's but fantastic. But the great thing is, Aye. no bother with wet blowing. Aye. No bother with tuning drones. No. The pitch, the, the reed's always the same. Aye, if you want to play one tune, just pick up, play a tune, fling them around the That's back right, couch. <laughs> and this red pipe, you know. Aye. Um, you just you play it through an amplifier, right? And you've got these two instruments. I kind of remember what they call them, but uh, you can march up and down. You've no trailing leads, right? No trailing leads with them. But, uh, there's, a there's a transmitter and a, I can't remember the other thing, but it's, it's amazing what they can do nowadays. Well, it's good fun, you know. And it's been good fun speaking to you today, Walter, and thanks very much uh, for giving uh, us at uh, Papers Persuasion your time. And I'm quite sure everybody watching this interview will have learned something and uh, got a wee bit of entertainment as well. Thank you very much, Walter. Thank you, Alan. It's been a pleasure. Right.